Ohio State had to scratch and claw and beg for the college football gods to give them a USC loss, but they're here. Nonetheless, C.J. Stroud, top-level NFL prospect, he has the opportunity to go out there and make some noise in similar fashion to former Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields in the college football playoff. Can he do this against last year's defending national champions, the Georgia Bulldogs? Uh, By the way, that betting line is currently sitting at 6.5 in favor of Georgia. Yeah, and uh, I believe this game is being played in Atlanta, so call it a a de facto home game for the Georgia Bulldogs. They just got to hop on the bus and go about 30 minutes to uh, to the stadium in downtown Atlanta. So uh, that's one of the perks of being the number one seed is that you get regional preference when it comes to your college football playoff location. And uh, I think that from the Ohio State standpoint, because that seemed to be where you were finding some interest off the bat in the story of C.J. Stroud and redemption for the Buckeyes and a game that I said uh, no more than I think four weeks ago now that uh, this would be the national championship game. Ohio State is the team with the best chance to beat Georgia. I said that up until they got smoked by Michigan. And uh, I think it's while Ohio State and Michigan are on comparable planes in terms of like matchups against Georgia, it is interesting to see that Ohio State gets them in the semifinal game because Ohio State does have a lot of four and five, uh, four and a half and five star prospects, not as many as Georgia, where Georgia can lose Quay Walker. Trayvon, uh, Trayvon Walker, uh, they can lose Jordan Davis, they can lose Nicobe Dean all to the first round of the draft and then replace them with uh, future first round picks. A couple of those first round picks got hurt in the SEC championship and they replaced them with more guys who will be picked very high in the draft. And so Georgia's defense is a bit of a machine and it'll be it'll be interesting to see them match up against the CJ Stroud, Ohio State offense because Ohio State still this year has the highest scoring offense in college football. I know they got exposed by Michigan in that last game, and that's the the, the sour taste everyone has in their mouth. But Ohio State has put up 40 or more points in over 70 percent of their games this season. Like this is a really, really good football team and a really, really good offense that uh, it'll be really interesting to see that match up against the Georgia defense because it's like it's not quite NFL football, but it's as close as you're going to get to uh, not being NFL football. Now, I-, I think the reason people were skeptical of Ohio State, and certainly I go back a few weeks ago when I would said I would prefer to see USC in the college football playoffs over them, was more so I, I just feel after the Michigan game, this Ohio State team just doesn't feel tough enough to stack up against the Georgia Bulldogs team. Yes, they have those elite prospects on offense, but this Ohio State team is not the same build of the Urban Meyer Ohio State teams from years past. I I don't think that they have the traction really get far. And we it's not unconventional for a number four seed to not really get far in the college football playoff, as we've seen. But I just am not really enthused by this matchup. For CJ Stroud, it's it's a great opportunity because I I feel the last taste of C.J. Stroud, a lot of NFL evaluators had was him getting smoked by Michigan. So if he could redeem himself in a way, I feel as though a lot of NFL evaluators might treat him more favorably in the draft. And the good news for C.J. Stroud is that it, the Michigan game wasn't entirely his fault. Like the defense gave up four plays of over 50 plus yards that ended up in touchdowns for Michigan. Now, did it help that C.J. Stroud threw an interception while driving against Michigan in the second half? Certainly not. Did They got outscored 28 to three and there is a three on the flip side of the 28 that we all remember. And so, yeah, I, I could understand the, the conversation around that for C.J. Stroud and uh, like you said, Ohio State is uh, is not built like the Urban Meyer teams, and that is by design. And it's not a bad thing either. It's just unconventional in the Big Ten where people are like, you got to bulk up and we're going to run the ball and it's going to be 20 to 17 grind fest like Michigan was playing for five years with Jim Harbaugh until they just abandoned that in the Ohio State game. Like that's not Ohio State's game. And Ohio State is very, very, very good at what they do, which is kind of closer to like a 2010 air raid type of team and there's it's not a problem there ohio state's lean and ohio state likes to move the ball through the air and uh defends very well with pass rush do you think that this ohio state team will be able to still put up points in the same sort of way against georgia or do you think that this is going to be a lot of bend but don't break by the georgia defense a lot of that i think is contingent on the georgia defense right because ohio state for all of their successes, that their offensive playbook is a little bit predictable. 
But the good news for Ohio State, the past, I guess, going back to when Dwayne Haskins was there. So what is that, like six years now? The thing is, like, you can be predictable and still beat the shit out of 95% of the teams that you play. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel when your team has a uh, first round running back in Ezekiel Elliott, followed up by uh, our buddy Trey Sermon, who ended up getting picked uh, by, I, I think it was he a third or fourth round pick by the 49ers, but he was um, a third round pick and uh, following the course of other highly drafted 49ers running backs, he was quickly cut one year later. Yeah, yeah. See, I knew I knew you would remember as the 49er resident 49ers fan, but they, but they've had NFL running backs mixed with NFL. I mean, first round quarterbacks, not just NFL quarterbacks. We're talking about Dwayne Haskins, who started for two years, picked in the first round. Justin Fields started for two years, picked in the first round. C.J. Stroud starting for two years will get picked in the first round. Like six years of NFL first round pick quarterbacks mixed with NFL caliber running backs. And we don't even have to get started about the wide receivers of Ohio state where literally Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, who are the two best rookie receivers in the NFL this year, sat out the Rose bowl last year, Jackson Smith and Jigba went for 300 yards and um, Marvin Harrison Jr. went for 200 yards. Jackson Smith and Jigba is sitting out of the bowl uh, or sitting out of the college football playoff. He he was injured to end the season. He missed the Michigan game. We'll slide in Egbuka. I apologize if I butchered his name, but Egbuka slides in. He's the number one receiving prospect in the 2021 uh, class. And he had over 100 yards in the Michigan games. Ohio State's been able to just replenish this talent. And that's why I th- and their offense is predictable which is why to answer your question, I think a lot of this is more contingent on the Georgia defense than it is what the Ohio State offense is bringing to the table. Now, something I did find interesting throughout the week is that the betting line started at seven and it's moved down to six and a half. That's interesting that Vegas gave the extra half point turnaround to Ohio State. What do you think that is? Why do you think that Vegas is more confident in Ohio State than other uh, teams we've seen in this kind of situation in the past? Well, we're recording, like you said, about a week out from the game. And and I think the part that's interesting is looking at the numbers here against the spread. Currently, 88 percent of the money is coming in on Georgia. And so that means Vegas is either preparing for a lot of sharps money to come in on Ohio State. Or the reason it's moving in the other direction is because the entire point of the point spread is to get 50 percent on both sides. Unless Vegas is really feeling like they have a good pick like uh a couple of weeks ago, the last week of the, uh, during conference championship week, uh, about 75 percent of the money uh, against the spread was against TCU and 75 percent was against Ohio or against USC, which meant Vegas. I, I might have this backwards, but Vegas was predicting that TCU and USC would struggle in their conference championship games. And lo and behold, both of them lost because. You know, those uh, those giant casinos in Vegas and those giant hotels are are built with money coming from the losers like they know what they're talking about in that sense. So I think early on, I think it's just people who are making their bets early on on this game are just throwing money at Georgia, throwing money at Georgia. And I think Vegas is seeing uh, some opportunity and some value by uh, taking Ohio State with those points. All right. Well, um, I guess the pick the pick is in uh, Georgia for me. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, I just don't see this being the year we the upset. I think that this Georgia team isn't as good as last year's team. And I think that can make for an interesting college football championship. However, in the first round against Ohio State team that hasn't really done well against tougher competition, I foresee this as a double digit touchdown win for Georgia. I am going to bring up a stat that I love so much, which is that. Scoring offense, Ohio State puts up more points than Georgia. Uh, Ohio State is currently the number one ranked scoring offense in college football. In terms of yards per game, Ohio State this season averaged 492 yards per game. Georgia, as an offense, averaged 492 yards per game. Both teams exactly the same number of yards during the season this year. They did it obviously very differently. Ohio State, mostly with their air attack. They've had injuries to running backs like Henderson, who we'll see what his status is for the game. And Ohio State against Georgia is going to be all about the defenses, all about the defenses. 
what plays are made by the defense. It's why I think George is going to win and also why I think that Ohio State might cover a touchdown point spread. This could be a game that uh, not necessarily comes right down to the wire, but C.J. Stroud, you talked about him and his draft prospects. He just might get a chance to get the ball with four minutes to play and a chance to win a playoff game. All right, guys. Well, let us know below in the comments section your selection. Are you going with Georgia? Are you going with Ohio State? like to hear your championship predictions if you have those already lined up. Stay safe, happy, and healthy from Juju and Kyle. We'll see you on the next one.